Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, taking another deep dive into this Oregon Ducks football program and talking about some top transfer portal targets that have emerged the last couple of days post Oregon Bowl game. I want to do two things. One, talk about what we saw from this Oregon team in the bowl game against Liberty, and then talk about some potential transfer portal targets that can elevate this team heading into the 2024 year. And many of the Oregon fans that have been listening the last couple of weeks, know how I feel about this roster. This is not an Oregon roster that needs to go out in the transfer portal and add a ton of names. It's going to be one of the most talented and balanced rosters that you see in 2024. If you're an Oregon Ducks fan and you watch that bowl game, you have to be extremely excited about the, what the first year in the Big Ten could hold for Oregon. And as a Michigan fan, I mean, Michigan's about to lose 15 plus NFL draft picks heading into the 2024 year. And if you're Oregon with some of the guys deciding to come back, like Jeffrey boss, a few names we're still waiting on. This is an Oregon team that can come into the big 10 year one and make some serious noise. Really excited to get into this before we do just want to say thank you to you guys. And many of the Oregon fans who've been listening for a while know this is a team that is one of my favorite programs to talk about a massive fan of what Dan Lanning is building in Eugene and the amount of support you guys have shown. It's been amazing. Cannot thank you guys enough. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. And without further ado, let's get into this. And I want to start with going back and, and talking about what we saw from Oregon in this bowl game against Liberty. Now, I watched back the film earlier this morning and a couple of things stood out. And I want to start with the offensive side of the football. And this kind of coincides with our whole point about this Oregon team. Like you saw a lot of young talent that was playing against Liberty and a lot of young talent that you are extremely excited about what they're going to look like in 2024. Now, most teams are talking about the quarterback position. I want to start with this Oregon offensive line that was amazing in 2023 and looks to be phenomenal in 2024 as well. And obviously you lose a guy like Powers Johnson at that center position, Poncho. Pancho Lalula, uh, he is a phenomenal center. And to see a true freshman come in and play as well as he has this year in 2023, if you're Oregon, you found your starting center for the next couple of years, and that is a position that is extremely hard for a young freshman to come in and play at a high level, and you saw Pancho do that. And you have a guy like Josh Conley Jr. who is only going to get better heading into 2024. If a Johnny Cornelius decides to come back, I mean, you're looking at one of the premier offensive lines, not only in the Big Ten, but in the entire country. So it starts up front for this Oregon team. They want to run the football. They want to protect the quarterback. You look at this Oregon team, that's going to be a massive check mark heading into 2024. Now, the wide receiver position, if Tez Johnson comes back, obviously you're losing Troy Franklin. Tez Johnson has the chance to truly put on a special season in 2024. He had a special season in 2023, and quite frankly, what he did in the bowl game was probably enough for him to go to the NFL and have NFL teams covet him in the draft, but there's also a chance for Tez Johnson to come back and be that true wide receiver one in this Oregon offense, and if he comes back, you're feeling really good about what this wide receiver room might look like, and we'll talk about some potential additions to this wide receiver room. You see the name on the screen that we'll talk about in a little bit. Tez Johnson, phenomenal, but you're also really excited about some of the other guys that didn't get a ton of opportunity in 2023 just because of the nature of having Troy Franklin and Tez Johnson be such dynamic players for this Oregon offense, but a guy like Jerry on Dickey, who you're excited about. Kenny Sadiq, I think, is a guy that could be a mismatched nightmare in 2024. Gary Bryant, flashed a little bit in, in his first opportunity to really be productive in this Oregon offense, this Oregon wide receiver room. If Tess Johnson's back, I mean, you are feeling extremely good about the wide receivers and the playmakers that are going to be surrounding the quarterback position. Obviously the running back room. Many of you guys know how I feel about that with Jordan James, Noah Whittington coming back from injury. That's going to be a group that's just fine. And then you obviously have a massive check mark at the quarterback position with Dylan Gabriel and Dante Moore transferring in. I don't think you'll find a, a quarterback room that's as talented as Oregon has heading into 2024. And then you flip to the defensive side of the football. I really excited about some of the young talent on this defensive line. And this is a position we'll talk about in terms of 
transfer portal additions. I have a few names for Oregon to look at. If Jordan Birch comes back, which I really think he should, he showed massive strides in his first year at Oregon. With that last year of eligibility, I think Jordan Birch is a guy that has a chance to really elevate his draft stock year two under Dan Lanning and that development that he'll get. But you also saw some good things about Amari Washington, a young guy on that inside of the defensive line. And you have two really big studs coming in on that inside of that defensive line in the 2024 class. Aiden Breland, Jericho Johnson could throw an Elijah rushing on that edge rusher spot. You look at that Oregon defensive line, and yes, do I think they could add some depth to this unit? Absolutely, and we'll talk about that. But this Oregon defensive line from a young talent standpoint, extremely exciting. Now at the linebacker position, you have Jeffrey Bossa coming back. That is massive. He's a guy that I think could be an all Big Ten performer in 2024. Hopefully Justin Jacobs Justin Jacobs comes back. You have Braden Platt coming in that 2024 class. And then the back end, I mean, Dante Manning finally kind of showing that flash of what he can be coming out of high school. Nico Reed played, played really well. Jaleel Florence, Roderick Pleasant. You bring in Kobe Savage in the transfer portal. I guess my purpose of recapping what we saw from the bowl game was to, to highlight the idea that Oregon doesn't need to go into the transfer portal to be a good team in 2024. This is already a team that is going to make a lot of noise in the Big Ten and from a national standpoint in this 2024 year, but Dan Landing, he's trying to get over the top. And you can use the transfer portal to kind of make that 1%. And when you're trying to do what Oregon's trying to do, and that is win a national championship, the margins the margins are small, right? The margins are extremely small. And you saw that for Oregon. Oregon, I mean, a couple plays away from beating Washington in both of those games and potentially playing for a national championship. So you're looking at this Oregon team and Dan Lanning's looking at this roster saying, where's that 1%? What's that 1% that we can get better and take that step in 2024? The first guy I want to talk about is in that wide receiver position and you're going after a big fish in Evan Stewart. And you saw Oregon make a run at a guy like Juice Wells. Now, Evan Stewart, the reason that they're throwing Evan Stewart, and I'm not getting on and talking about Evan Stewart for every single team because Evan Stewart has the possibility to be the best wide receiver in 2024. That's how talented... Evan Stewart is. And if you're Oregon, you have a serious shot at, at landing Evan Stewart. You already made his small list of, of schools and programs that he's interested in, but you take a look at Oregon and what they can sell. Obviously with what Troy Franklin and Tess Johnson did in 2023 and Bo Nix, this is an offense that Evan Stewart can come in and thrive. And that is not something he dealt with for his first two years at Texas A&M. And the reason I'm bringing Evan Stewart up is if Tess Johnson does decide to go to the NFL draft, which I don't think any Oregon Duck fan would blame Tess Johnson, Evan Stewart could come in and be that true wide receiver one. And quite frankly, with Tess Johnson even on this team, and you have Evan Stewart, Tess Johnson, that's probably the best wide receiver duo that you see in the country next year. You talk about finding that 1%, that player that can make that one play to get Oregon over the hump. Evan Stewart, I think, could be that guy. Another wide receiver that I would be taking a look at in terms of the potential, not necessarily what the wide receiver is right now, but what the wide receiver could be is Malik Benson, who was the number one Juco uh, transfer last year, 10-4, coming out of high school in the 100-meter dash time. You're talking about someone 6'1", 200 pounds, that is one of the fastest football players on the field. Oregon wants to operate in space, and we've talked about this a ton. You want to get players – who are, are guys that can be difference makers with the football in their hand. Will Stein, I don't think there's a better offensive coordinator in the country at scheming up his players to have the football in space. And a guy like Malik Benson, only 13 catches for Alabama last year in an offense that we all saw in the, in the Rose Bowl, just struggled to get the football to the playmakers on the perimeter. Malik Benson enters the transfer portal, a guy that I think has – so much potential that hasn't been realized yet. And I think he's just scratching the surface of what kind of wide receiver he can be at the college football level. And there's not a better spot for a wide receiver to come and reach that potential than with the Oregon Ducks. And I think the Oregon Ducks are in a really, really good spot in terms of checking those boxes of, yes, the offensive scheme is somewhere that a wide receiver with playmaking ability can come thrive. You saw that in 2023, you're going to have elite quarterback play with Dylan Gabriel and Dante Moore in that quarterback room. 
for Malik Benson, you're looking at your opportunities and where you can go and kind of make some plays in an offense. I think this Oregon Ducks offense certainly could be one of those units. Now, the one other position that kind of highlights to me, and I wouldn't even say wide receiver is a top priority for Oregon because I really do like what the wide receiver room looks like with some of the young talent, is probably that defensive line. And this is by no means me saying that I don't think this Oregon defensive line is good in 2024. It's more saying if Oregon wants to take that next step, and again, this next step is winning a national championship. This was one of the best teams in college football that we saw in 2023, you want some difference makers and you want some depth on that defensive line. You're losing a lot of depth on the inside. You're having a guy like Aiden Breland and Jericho Johnson, is it Avon Sims come in? You don't want to have to rely on a bunch of true freshmen to be your playmakers and to be your depth for 2024. So you're probably looking at adding a few guys that, that are one difference makers, but two guys that can come in and give Oregon that depth on the defensive line. The first guy I want to talk about is Jamari Caldwell, probably my favorite interior defensive lineman still left in the transfer portal right now. Coming from Houston, Jamari Caldwell is a guy that probably isn't going to stuff the stat sheet in terms of tackles for loss and sacks, but is a guy that is one of those unsung heroes. And as a Michigan fan, we have a bunch of those guys on that inside of the defensive line that are not necessarily having 10 plus tackles for loss and 10 plus sacks, but they're eating double teams. They're making plays at the line of scrimmage and they're allowing for linebackers to come in and make plays. That's a really important aspect of the defense that gets overlooked when you're talking about constructing an elite defense. I think Georgia and Dan Lanning, what he did with Georgia when he was their defensive coordinator probably understands this more than anybody else, right? What was so special about those Georgia linebackers is they got downhill made plays behind the line of scrimmage. Yes, those linebackers were phenomenal, but it had a lot to do with dominating the line of scrimmage and kind of creating space for those linebackers to make plays. When you have a defensive line that is not dominating the line of scrimmage, it's hard for linebackers to impact the game at a high level. And a guy like Jamari Caldwell is going to dominate the line of scrimmage. And again, he's not going to be a penetrator that's getting 10 plus TFLs, but he's a guy that's going to allow a guy like Jeffrey Bassa to shoot gaps and play clean and play downhill and make those plays. And Jamari Caldwell wouldn't be the flashiest get in the transfer portal, (coughs) excuse me, but an addition for Oregon that I think would be extremely impactful. And another guy I want to talk about really quick, and a guy that Dan Lanning, when he was the DC, offered at Georgia is Isaiah Hastings, a guy that just hit the transfer portal for Alabama, a guy that uh, coming out of high school had so much talent, 6'4", 300 pounds, moves extremely well, hasn't necessarily found the field for Alabama yet, but another one of those situations where you have guys in the transfer portal who are are good players but haven't realized their potential, kind of like what we just talked about with Malik Benson. Isaiah Hastings, for an Oregon team that wants to build depth on the defensive line, I think Isaiah Hastings could come in and kind of be that guy. And you'll see – and I. You might see Oregon, who they have Aiden Breland coming in early and rolly. You might get a sense of Dan Lanning might see what they have in spring, evaluate some of the young talent that they have on that defensive line, and then after spring practice say, okay, we either do or we don't need to go out and add some more defensive linemen on that inside. So you might see Dan Lanning hold off in the transfer portal till the spring, till the spring cycle, and we will revisit this after we evaluate spring practice. But Isaiah Hastings would be another guy that I'm keeping an eye on. And you might see some more impact defensive linemen hit the portal in the second go around as well. And I would expect Oregon to be a big player for guys on the inside. Again, building depth, building talent on the line of scrimmage, especially moving into the Big Ten, will be a priority for the Oregon Ducks. You take a look at this team. And this was a team that you kind of got a glimpse of what this team's going to look like in 2024 in that bowl game. Really excited for some of this young talent to develop. This is a team that doesn't need to go out and add many players to the transfer portal to be a competitor in 2024. But Dan Lanning, you know, is going to look for that, that 1% to get this team over the hump. These are some guys that I've identified that I think would be good fits. This is a team that I'm extremely excited about. We'll continue to evaluate, to talk about it. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel and we'll talk to y'all later.